Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God character guide video. And today we are looking at, quite possibly, my most frequently requested Realm of the Mad God character to review, the Knight. The Knight is considered by many to be the greatest class in the game, the most overpowered, the most versatile. So the question I have for you is, what exactly gives the Knight this title? Why is he the most overpowered character? That's what I'm here to talk about. As usual, I'm going to be starting off with the knight stats. That's the definitive way of how we find out what the knight is truly capable of. We have 50 attack, 50 speed, 75 vit, 40 def, 50 dex, and 50 wisdom. A lot of 50s. He only has two high stats. But before I talk about the knight's trademark vit and def, we have to pay more attention to the one stat I think everybody overlooked his wisdom. In my trickster guide video, I talked about how a character's wisdom really does reflect how dependent they are on their ability for survival and DPS. If you haven't seen my trickster guide video, you should probably go check that out just so that way it'll clear up some confusion later on. Essentially what I mean is a character with high wisdom is dependent on its ability. Without it, it would be a lot worse than it already is. And a character with low wisdom would just be too overpowered if it had any more wisdom than it already does. And if we look at the knight, that's exactly what it is. The knight has 50 wisdom, a low 50 wisdom. There isn't a character in the game that has any less than 50 wisdom. That alone tells us that the knight's ability must be good. However, if we look at his attack and dex, we see that his ability to get damage in is nothing to be desired. 50 attack and 50 dex, that's basic, that's nothing, that's a wizard's better than that, a necro's better than that. So how is it then that the knight has such a capability of getting high DPS? Since I'm practically spelling it out for you at this point, I'm just going to go out and say it. It's his ability. His ability is incredibly overpowered. It's the reason that the knight is what he is, and that's why he has such a capability of getting DPS in. That's it. That's it. Plain as day. His shield is overpowered. Now, before I talk about his ability, I do have to go over what weapon he should use. It's just kind of customary. We have the Acclaim, we have Demon Blade, we have Stone Sword, we have Crystal Sword. Which one should you use? Now, once again, it's really all dependent on where you are and what scenario that you're in. But to be honest, Acclaim is probably your best choice. So don't fret if you don't have a UT sword. In fact, in general, if you don't have a UT weapon, who cares? The tiered weapons are just as great. Okay, so you don't have a Cronus. Pick up a Foul. It's fine. Now, while the UT swords are great, I'm not going to go into a full sword guide right now. That's for another time. All I can say is D-Blade's good for low def minions. Stone Sword is, you know, to be honest, I would never use Stone Sword on a knight. I find it to be completely pointless because DPS on a knight is already so low based on attack and dex, like I said, that if you give him a Stone Sword, you're already lowering it even more. Okay, so you do more damage, but for a character like the Warrior who buffs his DPS because he shoots faster, or the Paladin because he buffs his damage, that would be a better choice. But for the knight, who's just playing his day with his attack and dex, don't give him the Stone Sword. That's not going to do anything for you. The shield is where it's at. You're going to want to pick a weapon that accommodates the shield perfectly. Tier 6 Colossus should be accompanied by the Tier 12 Acclaim. But hey, that's just me. Alright, the moment you've all been waiting for, uh, it's, it's finally time that we talk about the Colossus shield. Shields in general. Ogmer and Colossus are the most frequently used shields. They're swap outs. And while Ogmer is an incredibly rare item, you still see it quite frequently. Because it's just that good. It's, uh, well, I, there's not really much I have left to say. If you haven't seen my Ogmer vs. Colossus video, you should go check that out. To sum it up bluntly, though, the Colossus Shield is an item that stuns your target for 3 seconds, and it deals massive damage. Five shots, all dealing, I believe it was 300 to 360 damage. Yeah, that's insane. And let me be clear with you guys. My whole view on melees in this game is that they were given low range because they deal a lot of damage with their sword. The knight does, what, 300 damage upon max? 300 damage per shot. That's a lot of damage, as opposed to a wizard who has 75 attack, 25 more than the knight, yet he only does 150 per shot, because his staff has longer range, therefore it must be weaker. Because if you give a class with long range, you need to make him weak, or else he would just be the most overpowered one in the game. It's plain as, it's simple. It's simple. So whenever a melee goes in to attack, they are given high def and low range, because with low range means you have to go under fire. And the only way that you're going to go under fire is if you have proper protection. That's why all melees have heavy armor. 
and they have high def because they're going to go under fire because that's how they were made. They were designed to get close to the enemy, hence their 3.5 range on their sword. However, this also means that whenever someone, that whenever a melee is attacking, if you aren't skilled enough to stay in the battle and dodge, you will get hurt eventually, and you will need to go back and heal up while your long-ranged fellows are getting their damage in. But the knight takes that entire concept and throws it out the window. The knight can just walk up, stun, and remain in the battle getting DPS. That whole window of the melee walking away because he's tanky and he's tanking all the shots and now he needs to rest, no, no, no. None of that. Now the knight can just stay in the battle the whole time and chain stun, getting maximum damage in the whole time, ruining the chances for everybody else. Now I understand that the knight is pretty much a key part of the game, and Kabam's not gonna nerf that or do anything to the knight anytime soon, which I'm fine with. I still think that that's something that we've kind of overlooked. The knight's only overpowered because of his ability. If he had any other kind of ability, even if it was a damage buff, even if it was a speed buff, it doesn't matter. Stunning is overpowered, no matter how you look at it. Now, don't think that I'm, like, picking on the knight or anything. I mean, my god, I love this guy. We've been friends for a real long time, and we met on, like, a Sunday afternoon, and we still keep in touch. It's great. But I just think that he's become a bit too overpowered. I mean, just look around. How many knights do you see? Everyone has a knight. Because, freaking, he's overpowered. And you know what? Maybe that's good. I mean, the knight must be freaking happy right now. He's probably just sitting there going, ha, yes. But... I don't really feel like getting myself into an unwanted rant right now, so I'm going to move on with the review. Let's talk about the proper armor for the knight. Now, it really does vary depending on your playstyle. A crop is a universal one. It gives you 24 def. It's all around good. Now, I have seen CC get some play, although I don't recommend it because the knight already has so much def. If you give him any more, it would be kind of pointless. You already have maximum damage reduction on so many enemies, Reducing your DPS for those few other bosses that you might fight in the future isn't exactly worth it. But like I said, different playstyles comes different armors. Now Rezu, the Resurrected Warrior's armor, is an interesting choice. It gives you an extra 150 MP, or so I'm led to believe, this is coming off the top of my head, and an extra 5 Wisdom. However, you're only given 17 Death. Okay, so you're losing Death, but you're getting a ton of mana. A ton of mana, and more wisdom. Remember whenever I was talking about how the low wisdom means that the stun is overpowered, and if you were given more wisdom, it would be too good for you? Maybe this is something to look into. Look into getting a rezu, start farming up cemeteries. Hey, hey, maybe, eh? Yeah. Now, it's kind of funny, because CC and rezu are actually complete opposites. CC's problem is that the knight already has so much death, you don't want too much. But with rezu... You don't have enough death. That's why using Rezu in conjunction with a ring that gives you death would be the best option. Put on an Expo, maybe a Pyramid Ring, balance it out, you're looking pretty good. You got like, what, four or five stuns? Hey, maybe you want to put on a Sphinx Ring if you're feeling insane, because that sounds pretty crazy. But hey, getting six stuns off? I'm jealous. Like, seriously, I don't even know who you are, and I'm freaking, I want that. Speaking of rings, which one should you pick for the night? I'm going to go right out and say it, my favorite ring to put on a knight is an HP ring. Depending, you know, exalted, unbound, whatever it may be, the more HP, the better. It's just incredible, especially with me, because I have a pet, so the more HP, the more I can refill, it's just better. A secondary choice for me would have to be Nile. Nile's great, it gives you more HP and MP, because the MP is what makes the knight overpowered. Expo is... You know, to be honest, I don't know why I see so many people running around with an Expo on a knight. Yeah, I get it. 60 HP and MP, just like Nile, is really good, but the 4 def and 4 vit, I just don't understand it. Why? The two highest stats on the knight are vit and def, so you, why would you need more? You're already getting your HP back super fast, and you're already reducing damage a whole bunch. There's no point in adding more to you. Put on something that gives you speed, that gives you dex, that gives you, I don't know, attack. Anything besides the two stats that we're already comfortable with. I don't know. I, I just don't get it. Alright, now, since this is a guide video, I should probably actually teach you guys how to use the knight. Alright, it's a little bit weird teaching. I don't really know how to tell you guys how to play. A lot of it is just a big feel thing, and I'm going to say that a lot because control is all about how you perceive the controls. If you control it a certain way that's different than someone else, it's going to feel different. The knight's a tank, and he deals a lot of damage. Enough said, that's all there is to it. Like, seriously, 
I don't know how else to describe it. There's almost no skill to the knight once he's maxed. You just run in, tank everything, and get your damage in. That's how simple it's become. The knight's a basic class. The hardest part is maxing his def, and even that's become a whole lot easier in the past couple of years. So if you want to make a class next, I recommend making the knight. Once you make a knight, you can make pretty much every other class after that. Just grind abysses all day, all night. You can max another character. You can max def and vit like just like that okay maybe i was a little bit too blunt the knight is not a no skill class you do need skill to use him effectively it's just that he can do so much there's a lot of things that he can do that doesn't require skill in it like an abyss that doesn't take skill that takes patience and wasd but take a tomb for example rushing a tomb is not easy once you get the hang of it it does get much simpler as time goes on but the beginning it takes a lot of perspective and familiarity with the dungeon around you and all of the enemies, knowing how much damage each enemy does and knowing if there's any debuffs around, it's a big mind game. And the bosses themselves, heck, if you don't stun at the proper time, you and your members could die. You have to time your stun perfectly, count one, two, stun again, maybe drink an MP pot or maybe think, oh man, I should save this for later. There is a lot of thought that goes into doing the more difficult dungeons and difficult aspects of the game. But since the knight is created to be tanky, there's a lot more that he can do that, say, a wizard can't. Wizard can't really rush an abyss, especially if you don't have a pet. Don't even, don't do that. Anyway, guys, that is the knight in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions for me about the knight or just about guides in general, please post in the comments. I would love to see what you guys have to say. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. All right. See you.